All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we are live in full effect right here, right now. We got a phenomenal, talented individual straight out of the West Coast. He is, in my personal opinion, a living legend. We got Invincible live on the line. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. I'm just uh, enjoying this California weather. Feeling good. Yeah, I got to say, man, you know, California weather sounds phenomenal right now. I'm down here in Canada, and I don't know if you've ever been to Canada around this time of year, but it's rainy, it's cold. We're just getting out of, we're just getting all that precipitation out of the air, man. So we're switching from winter into spring right now, and it's uh, it's a pain in the ass, man. Uh, yeah, I haven't been to Canada, but I, I have heard, and, um, but I, I mean, I, I heard it's really cold, but I mean, yeah, Cali, Cali's nice, man. It's, it's pretty much stays nice all around, you know. Full time, all year. Hey man, that's the best. That's the best way to be, in my personal opinion. You can't go wrong with palm trees and sunshine. Yeah. But I want to jump right into this, man, because I know you're a busy guy, man. You're doing this big press run. But I gotta ask you, man, taking you back to the beginning of your amazing career, I gotta ask, what inspired and sparked the amazing career of Inv- of Invincible? Uh, so I grew up in a household like that. That uh, actually, like my mom, my grandmother. So just music in general was always a big in my household. And I always enjoyed music, and I, I just started messing with a karaoke machine, and then one day I said, you know what, I'm not too shabby at this. And I think my surroundings, too, I wanted to kind of express, you know, what I'm surrounded by, and I just I found love with recording, found love with writing. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a big, I'm super passionate about music. I mean, I, I just... Day in and day out, I listen to music. And I gotta say as well, man. I noticed that you, I also read that you actually are from the same camp, which actually started the careers of the legendary group Above the Law. I was wondering if you tell our listeners a bit more about that. And of course, how did you happen to get connected with the same camp? So yeah, so I was uh, I was about 15 years old, and um, so I'm originally from Pomona, California, which like sugar-free cocaine. Above the law, that's where they're from. And uh, I seen right next to where I used to live at Pomona, uh, there was a studio, Hot Tracks uh, Studio. So I just made the call and I, I uh, ended up booking some, some time. I had a job, I dropped out of school, had a, I got me a job at Taco Bell, and then I started working on the side with, with uh, like just, I was just always a hustler doing side gigs, doing all kinds of stuff to kind of fund my, my music. So I ended up hooking up with a producer named Jimmy Robinson. And if you're from, that area, Mona, you should know who Jimmy Robinson from Hot Tracks is because that's, like I said, that's for cocaine, sugar free. Even Sugar Free mentions it in plenty of the uh, interviews that, that he started with Jimmy Robinson. And um, he took a liking to my sound and he was tripping out that I was so young, uh, working my ass off and, and pretty much, you know, willing to, to, to fund my music by my own beats and just be in the studio from day in and day out. And I got to ask as well, because I was actually on my list as well about Jimmy Robinson. I have to ask, man, what was it like just actually working at Hot Track Studios? Because that's, that's a famous, it's such a huge, famous, like, studio out there in California. Yeah, so with Jimmy, uh, like, I feel like Jimmy's, uh, you know, he, 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 uh, he got, I mean, he gave me my name, you know, Invincible. So he was somebody that, he, he, get, he had a strong work ethic. He used to play the guitar. A lot of people knew him for playing the guitar, and he worked with tons of different groups out there. But he actually would work with me. Uh, I mean, we, we would stay up late hours till. I mean, we'd start working like nine to like eight in the morning, and and we would work nonstop on on tracks. And that's how I was able to pretty much come up with a, a ton of tracks that I've never even released. And I was able to work with a lot of artists, two West Coast artists, that a lot of tracks were never released. And and I do hope to put those out, even though they're a little old school, uh, but I, I've been around for, for a while now. And also as well, I noticed that you were the CEO of uh, Fat Inc. Magazine and Fat Studios. I was wondering if you can tell our listeners a bit more about those two amazing companies. And of course, like, how can our listeners inquire about your services they want to maybe purchase a magazine slot or, of course, some studio time, COVID-19 permitting, of course? Yeah, yeah. So so the, uh, the, the, the fat, fat Magazine was something that I started and I was able to create the Fat Studios in uh, in California, in Southern California. And so, yeah, I mean, you can pretty much look up Fat Studios. It's in a city called Colton, California, which is about an hour from Los Angeles. And, uh, yeah, 
that, so I, I rented out for photo studios, video studios. All the videos that I pretty much, the last couple of videos that I shot, I shot a great amount of it in my studio. And um, so I've been able to utilize my own space to basically do my, my own videos. And uh, as far as the magazine, is currently on hold due to the COVID stuff because we're, we're still going digital. Uh, but yeah, I, I pretty much wanted to be my own my own boss, and, and that's kind of what I have been doing. I mean, I have a lot of things that I do. Um, not only I don't know if you knew this, but I also run a strip club here in California. So I'm doing. I got my hands in a lot of different things. Hey man, you know what? At the end of the day, man, I gotta say the strip club is definitely some good money. I'll tell you that for a fact. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of ones. You know what I mean? A lot a lot of ones coming coming through the place probably. Oh, yeah, you got to have a lot of ones, and I stay equipped with ones, man, so, um, yeah, you know, any listeners are ever ever in Cali, they can hit me on the IG, or when you come to Cali, I definitely, you know, take you to the club, and uh, I'm pretty sure everybody will enjoy the, enjoy this, this this club that, I, that I'm running. But just going back to the magazine for one, one minute, because, like, I just have to ask this, like, is, is it difficult, like, actually transitioning from, like, you know, a normal, you know, magazine print to actually online distribution, because... I mean, personally, I, I, I can't really get into the whole digital scenario. I was wondering, how do you actually go about doing that? You know what? That was a, that's, that's a little interesting because I, that was something I was trying to figure out because everybody that I meet, they want a physical copy. They're like, no, nah, I don't want, I don't want a, a digital. I want physical. Where's a physical copy? So, yeah, it, it is something that we were trying to transition to and, and trying to figure out, and I'm still working on it. Um, I mean, I'm still working on it, and I'm pretty sure within the next few months we'll have we'll have something here soon. In the meantime, I just kind of been focused on the music side, and just been working on my music right now. And also, as well, I noticed that you you have actually done a huge amount of work with the legendary DJ Battlecat. I was wondering, how did yourself and Battlecat initially get connected? And of course, what is it like just being in the studio with basically one of the best producers to grace California? Yeah, so Cat Battle Cat, uh, we met. Um, I met through his his uh, his manager at the time, and uh, his manager manager's name was D Cat. So I met him, and uh, I told him I wanted a straight Battle Cat beat. That's what I wanted. So I ended up getting the Battle Cat beat. I didn't even meet Battle Cat, but I ended up recording the song, sending it to to his manager. His manager showed Battle Cat. Battle Cat wanted to meet me. So uh, there was a song called Baby Girl, and it's actually on YouTube. That was the first song that we ever did. So if you look up Invincible Baby Girl, that was the first song me and Battle Cat ever did together. And uh, Battle Cat tripped out, like, damn, who is this dude? And we kind of built an ongoing relationship, like, as far as, you know, just working together and, and doing music. And, and uh, he he was man, I'll keep it real, he kind of took me under his wing, showed me a lot. Um, and his work ethic is is just it's phenomenal man it's like you're working with a genius you know i haven't yet worked with dr dre but i'm pretty sure their work ethics are not. i i can imagine how uh, they work together so i know for a fact that cat uh his work ethic has got to be up there with, with the best of them and i most definitely agree my, my personal opinion i always say that dj battle cat doesn't get the proper recognition he deserves man because he he gave birth to so many legendary projects on the west coast man i really do wish that you know people would actually put him at least in the top five man because he really has produced a lot of amazing projects yeah he, he's uh he's done a, and you know what what's what's crazy about it and that's why i kind of talk about like i feel like uh, as far as i go i just been manifesting things you know what i mean because i said i used to listen to a lot of battle cat tracks when i was when i was younger and i said you know what i'm gonna eventually work with you and I ended up working with him, and, and um, yeah, man, he, he, he definitely doesn't get the props that he deserves, deserves because he's, he's very, like, he can play a bunch of different instruments, drums, and he's really creative when, when working, in, uh, working in the studio. And I was working with him recently, and I'm not sure what he's going to do with this particular track, but, I mean, it's a banger. And uh, he was actually helping me write. You know, I, I don't ever let anybody write my music, but he was like, man, let me help you write some stuff. And I was open-minded to it, and he was actually helping me write. And I'm like, man, that's that's a trip that uh, that he was actually participating on a writing kit. And so he's just he's just very universal as far as what he can do. And if you ever watch him in a studio, you'll definitely be amazed. 
and also as well, I read that you actually worked on the movie Freedom Riders. I was wondering, what was that experience like? And of course, how did that opportunity to work on that amazing film come to be for you? Okay, so you know what? A lot of people, I actually did work on that. Um, but the, the one that actually, uh, so we kind of get mixed up together is my brother. So my brother's an actual actor, and he's actually throughout, he, if you watch the movie, he's throughout that film. Uh, but but I was able to meet a lot of the cast members, and you know I, I contributed some of my time uh, to that as well. But my brother's actually the one that's you know he's I think he's even on the poster, the Freedom Riders poster. But he was throughout the movie on, on, on that film. And I have to ask you as well. Well, just more on the topic of movies, do you actually have like a do you actually want to like pursue acting as well, or do you just want to stay on the whole hip hop side of things? You know what you know what that you mentioned that I, I definitely will. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna definitely give it a try. I, I do know it's, it's a lot of work doing that type of stuff, and um, I, I definitely want, I want to do it. I'm, I'm keeping my options open. I know that right now my time is. I'm trying to figure out how to how to be uh, flex my time and, and how to delegate my time because you know I do a lot of different things. For me, running my own business. For me, running the club. For me, doing music. So I, I really want to figure out how to delegate my time. And also as well, your most recent release was actually is a single called Rain Dance featuring the one and only legendary Too Short and Roman. I was wondering, what's the story behind that single? And of course, how did you get connected with Too Short and Roman? Well, Too Short, yeah. He, um, so it's another thing, man. I'm like heavy and big on like just kind of, you know, manifesting what we, you know, what we, what we think, man. I speak it and then I just make it happen. Uh, I was working at the studio. Uh, well, well, I had my boy Sans Carter, and he's out in Denver, Colorado, and he ended up sending me some uh, some beats. And I said, man, this song sounds like a too short. Like I need too short on it. I went and recorded it. I said, I'm gonna get too short on this song. And Roman had already laid his hook on it. I said, I'm gonna get too short. And um, make a long story short, I linked up with Crystal Moore. Who, uh, who's been kind of helping out with, with this whole project, and she's been more than how, and she made the two short uh, connection with me. And um, yeah, man, he laid the song. I loved it, and uh, I think it kind of fit with what we're doing because me being at the club, I'm able to see what kind of. I did the song because I was thinking, like, look, it, there's a lot of people that come there, they don't throw no dollars, they, they just watch, might get a beer, just do nothing. I wanted to make something to call Rain Dance because we, when we go to a club, we, we should participate on making it rain. And I felt like Too Short was the main one to, to he was a great, he would be a great collab to be up on there. And uh, we made the connection and yeah, man, we, we, shit, I think we connected and we just had a release party that was off the hook. I, I saw that as well, man. I even noticed that Too Short even made some video drops as well and actually helped push it, man. I gotta say, it, it looked like one hell of a phenomenal party. Oh yeah, we we definitely we party. We we had the girls there. We had the ones. So the ones we definitely were equipped with, and uh, we had girls shaking the booties all around us. A short performance, some of his classic records. Um, it was a packed house, and 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 this happened to be at the club that that I actually, uh, you know, am running in the in the Orange County area in California. But I gotta ask you as well, what is next for you? Because I do know, like, right now you're pushing that too short rain dance song really hard right now. But I gotta ask you, like, 2021 is still early, man. I gotta ask, like, what is next for you uh, come this year? Is there anything I happen to miss during this interview? Anything else you still want to talk about or promote? But we still have you here live on the Canadian airwaves. Yeah, so so as far as what I will be doing, um, I'm working on, you know, I'm working on another single as we speak, and I think it's cool. And, um, you know, I know Rain Dance is, is up first, and, and I want to see, you know, how people kind of react to this record. Uh, but I, I am working on, on other music. Uh, I will release another video here soon. Um, and then I'm going to hit you guys, with, you know, with an album. So um, I, I just wanted people to get familiar. Even though I've been doing this for a long time, I wanted people to be familiar with my sound and, and you know, just my voice and get, get in touch before I actually release an album. Uh, but, yeah, the album is the next project. Um I feel like I have a lot to offer, and I think people just need to really check me out, give, give my music a chance on YouTube, or, or you know, I'm, I'm pretty easy to find. All you got to do is pretty much search my name, and then something will come up. 
But also, I, this is the time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that slides into the radio station airwaves. Like, just just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. And I know you just dropped some of your social media handles, but if you can, let individuals know other places they can find you as well. Yeah, definitely. So if you're, you're on Instagram, uh, you can find me at OG Invincible. On um, Facebook, you know, you can even find my personal at, uh, I mean, just search me up, Invincible. You know, Twitter, OG Invincible. YouTube, Invincible TV, and uh, you find a lot of my music there. As far as my shout-outs, I definitely like to shout-out you guys and everybody in Canada shoot, uh, that's tuned in uh, and, and hearing hearing your station. I mean, uh, I'm just thankful that you even giving me an opportunity and a platform to be up on air and um, promote what I'm doing. So thank you. Shout-out to you. Shout-out to everybody in Canada and pretty much Crystal Moore out in Atlanta. Um just, you know, the whole team, Roman, Short, uh, shit, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people I'm forgetting, but I mean, just shout out to everybody that just been supporting me throughout these years, because uh, I'm definitely going to come with a lot more stuff uh, for this 2021. And I got to say as well, you're most certainly welcome, and I've been, we've been playing this, uh, your Rain Dance song on the radio station. I'm telling you, individuals down here in Canada have been loving it. And right after this interview, I'm going to be playing it again for the individuals that happen to not have heard it when they're tuned into the radio station airways. I'm telling you, this song is absolutely phenomenal. And I'm looking forward to more music that, that you actually come out with this year because this one right here is absolutely phenomenal, in my personal opinion. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Like like I said, we put we put some work and time and effort into the sound. And I'm real big on, on sound. I had fun with it, and that, that's, to me, that's what's important is, is uh, being able to record and just have fun and throwing it out there to see what how people react. Some people may love it, some people may not, but I had fun doing it. So hopefully you guys, that, that energy can uh, be a reflection on, on it. Hopefully that's reflecting off of, uh, to, to the audience, you know, that, that, that good energy that I put into the song. But I gotta say, first and foremost, thank you so much for just taking the time of your busy evening and sliding into the 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM airwaves. Honestly, it was an honor and most definitely a privilege. But I gotta say, hopefully down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. Oh yeah, definitely, man. And if I'm ever in Canada, which maybe that, that should be a goal of mine, um, you know, I'll definitely uh, reach out and, and see what's up, man. But uh, for, the, for the most part, I'm definitely... Uh, going to tune in and, and keep a watch on what you guys are doing, and I think it's, it's dope, man. Hey, I got to say thank you so much, man. I greatly appreciate the positive feedback, and most definitely, man. Th thank you so much again, and definitely have yourself a wonderful night out there in California. Yeah, you too. Appreciate it.